Yo, welcome in, fellas, fellas, fellas. Today we're kicking off 250 Andara runs. Now I am starting off a new single player account, going on to a new Holy Grail where I'm only keeping items that I find specifically here and dropped on Diablo 2 Resurrected. So Andara is one of the first things you do to get some really good gear early on for a sorceress or for an account in general. A lot of people run places like this even on Battle.net after ladder launch. Now I have incredibly budget gear on this character. People always ask about seeing the build and stuff. It's a fireball meteor build. I do have an Oculus that I found previous to this, but besides that, it's a lot of incredibly budget gear, Viper Magi, Lidless, stuff like that. Just some faster cast rate rings, nothing crazy. Another frequently asked question I'm going to knock out of the way. People always want to know how many players difficulty am I running this on? Because it's single player, you can change it. I run these runs on players three difficulty. And depending on the gear I find along the way, I start off with like 180 magic find. I end up with about 260% magic find by the time I'm done doing these runs. As we get into it here, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe up so you never miss any of the future videos or miss me live streaming right here on this YouTube channel. Let's get after it. So yeah, we do not have to wait long. We're on the very first run. I pull a unique amulet. Hopefully we can get something good from Andaral. A unique amulet on the very first run is legendary. So once I eventually get around to ID in this amulet, it's nothing crazy, but it's nice to find yourself a good old fashioned crescent moon. Now we're hopping to the seventh run, taking out Andaral right here. And if you ever forget what run we're on, look up in the upper right-hand corner. I got that sick run counter going right there. Now, you don't usually look for these when you're farming Andaral, but I will take runes when they drop. Nothing GG, but I do get myself a pull rune. We'll double up that run number a little more, actually, to number 15. And Daryl's nice enough to give me a unique Grand Charm. There's not a whole lot of options for this. I'm going to go ahead and throw mine in the stash and grab this one. And of course, it's a Geed's Grand Charm. We're hoping to get a good one. I'm looking for 40 Magic Find. Uh, this one gets 33. Not bad. Not great. But 14 reduction on the vendor price isn't too bad either. Just two runs later is all we got to wait for another noteworthy item we get right here. And it is a Grim Shield. I just note this because early on in a, a plug ear and ladder, get that faster cast rate before you can make yourself a spirit. I'll go ahead and throw it on. It's a little bit better than the one I was using. Also, I get a Venom Ward along the way. Meh. 19 runs in, we get our first unique ring. And Daryl is the queen of unique rings. Everyone knows that Nightmare Andy is good for SOJs. Didn't get one here from Hell and Daryl, but it is a 28 Magic Find Angel. Eh, I'll take it. Run 36 is our next noteworthy item. We get a winged helm here from Andariel, and that's going to be the Valkyrie Wing, giving you two to Amazon skills, 20% to both faster walk run and hit recovery. We're grabbing ourselves another unique ring here at run number 46. I would love to get an SOJ, but I know you had to get a ton of these before you get one. I get a Raven Frost. It's actually my first one on this single player account. Just a couple runs later, chop down Andario. We'll pull out, ooh, another ring. Ooh, baby, is this gonna be that SOJ? I cannot wait to get one already. Come on, baby. Oh, a Dwarf Star. So this isn't crazy GG, but it is godly when you don't have any faster cast rate gloves and you're at the beginning of a ladder or at the beginning of a single player playthrough, and bam, you get yourself some Trangs gloves, 20% faster cast rate, we're pulling off them frost burns and sticking on those trans gloves. Let's go. And Daryl is totally noteworthy for a lot of these mid-level, just middle of the road uniques and set items. Here we get a set of Venger Guard. It's gonna be for the Immortal King set. This is the Immortal King's Helm. It's a really great, I take a lot of these mid-level stuff at the beginning of ladder and trade them for perfect gems and then eventually trade those perfect gems for things like mid runes and stuff like that. So many unique rings from Andaril are only at run number 90, and I'm already getting another one. Now, I know, I know, this is going to be the SOJ I'm looking for. Ugh, another Dwarf Star. Also kind of not that crazy, but I do get a Griswold armor on the exact same drop. Kind of neat, I guess. Just hopping three runs later, we get a unique Serpent Skin armor. It's what I'm using right now on my Sorceress. A great 
budget option, one of the best items you can use on your Sorceress until you get an Enigma, and that is the skin of the Viper Magi. 32 all res, not bad. A mega sick item for any Sorceress at even of 100 runs. We get a set Swirling Crystal and the set Avenger Guard. The Swirling Crystal is going to be for the Tal Rasha set, Tal Rasha's Lidless Eye. This one rolls 2-2-1. Two, two, they can either roll with 1 or 2 to each one of those mastery skills. And the helmet, obviously, we found it just a second ago, Immortal King's Will. A little bit of a double drop here. It's 33 runs later, though. Wow, that's kind of a, a long drought for Indario. But that Grey Colossus Volge is actually four open sockets. The first elite polearm base with four open sockets that I found early on in this account. Ah, man, come on. That unique ring, of course it's a Minald. Of course. Once again, this isn't exactly GG, but you need to have at least one of these. And this is actually the first one that I found on this particular single player account. Oh, rip. Ethereal, that's too bad, but hey, at least I got myself my first gold wrap. Run 162, kind of a budget item for a assassin, I suppose. It's not used a lot anymore back in the day. Bartuck's Cutthroat was GG for the assassins. Now it's kind of relegated to the trash heap. Run 155, two uniques and a set item, all of which that are kind of okay, kind of okay. The most noteworthy one is the mesh armor, which is a shaft stop. Then the helm is for Natalia's set, and the gloves are Grave Palm. Run 157, not the craziest, most GG item here, but it is a unique cask. And usually it's not noteworthy, but this one actually rolls with perfect magic find, and that can get up to 50. This is kind of a budget option for melee characters with its increased attack speed, and it has dual leech, but it also is noteworthy with that magic find. Now I found Trank's gloves earlier, it's not too long later, we're at run 163, and I get the armor that goes to that exact same set. That is the set Chaos Armor, and it is Trangle's Scales. Trangle's Scales, almost messed that one up. <laughs> Man, I've been hunting, I've been hoping to get an SOJ, here I get a unique ring, and finally at run 169, this unique ring finally did it for me. Give me that SOJ. Of course it's not. <laughs> Another Nagel. But I didn't have to wait long. We're at run number 180. Another unique ring. And finally, I got my Stone of Jordan. Let's go. Oh, even a worse Nagel. Well, we'll steer clear of the unique rings here. For a little while, we're at run 182, and we get a set war belt. That's going to be another piece for the Immortal King set. Running in Daryl, you can usually just stack up these little Immortal King set all but the armor. So here we got Immortal King's detail. Now at run 186, we get another one of those set chaos armors. Oh, God, look how ugly that game used to be. Jesus Christ, that scared the crap out of me. But anyways, this set chaos armor once again is Trangul's scale. Here, 195, we get an awesome, awesome budget mercenary helm right here. It's actually for the Tal Rasha set, but it is just incredibly good on that Act 2 mercenary. That's his set death mask, and that is Tal Rasha's Herodric Crest. This is sort of a low level item, but it is best in slot for a lot of different melee builds. That's this unique demon hide sash, and that is. String of ears, it can roll with 10 to 15 on the damage reduction. Let's see what we get here. A poopy doopy, 11 damage reduction. Here at 216, once again, neither one of these are crazy GG, but I love double drops. So K. Hagen's Wisdom, kind of a cool budget item for those sorceresses right there with the skills and the cast rate, hit recovery, mana after kill. And we get Corpseborn right here as the ordinate plate. Doesn't really have any good uses, but hey, it does have Corpse Explosion on it at least, right? We're getting close to the end here. We're at run 222, but we still got a few more good drops on our hands. And kaboom, another unique ring. And geez, it took long enough, but I finally got that SOJ. Oh, it's another freaking Nagel. Of course it is! Whew, at least I'm pretty stoked. Before the ends of these runs, we actually got something crazy here. We got this set 
amulet right here, and it's going to be good for the, uh, I don't know, maybe getting some attack rating because it's only Angelic's wing. Psych out, but we got a unique ring, and it's a Manald again. Of course it is. Of course it is. Can Sweet Phil make the same joke for the seventh time in the same video? Here's a unique ring, and it is, I'll just tell you, it's not an SOJ. It's another freaking Manald. And you know what? We get another unique ring. Can it be the SOJ? Can it be? Come on! Ugh. 15. Nice. 15. Magic fine. So I was really hoping to get lucky and get a Shaco here from Andaril. Unfortunately, I did not. But I got a few good pieces of gear to level up my character. So if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe up so you never miss any of the future videos. Or you don't want to miss me live streaming. I stream right here on this YouTube channel. Huge shout out to the channel members. Thank you so much for your support. It would not be possible for me to keep making these videos and to keep live streaming on this channel without your support. So I am eternally grateful. Peace out, YouTube. And don't forget, keep slaying. Ooh.